Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. John Kelly Profiler here, and welcome. Welcome to part two of our very sad series, Who Took Summer Wells? Today's show is going to be called, Who's Guilty? Before we get into it, I just want to bring out my book. Many people have been asking about my book. It's my latest one. It's called Discovering Lazarus. Discovering Lazarus. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly of John Kelly Profiler. And this is about me being reborn many, many years ago and how I became a criminal profiler hunting evil. I must say that everybody is innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. There's no question about it. And today we're going to go over the various scenarios that I brought up in our last video. We're going to continue to try and boil them down and try and eliminate various scenarios. And then when we get to a scenario that we can eliminate, then that's going to be a pretty solid scenario, right? So that's, that's what we're going to do. And uh, we want you to please help us. Please like us. Please subscribe to us. Uh, we'd like you to be on board with us. Remember, if you're not playing the angles, the angles are playing you, right? That's what you keep in your mind when you start to investigate something, you start to work through something, all right? So here's where we're going to start. The first scenario is Summer just walked away. Let's see what we like about that, what we don't like about that. And I want you guys to comment Help us out with this. Comment on this. Okay, we appreciate the feedback. Okay. Summer just walked away. Just left the house, walked into the woods, and something happened. You know, the woods is filled with coyotes and bears, and you have all kinds of snakes. They're poisonous snakes, too. Copperheads, probably some rattlesnakes there. Maybe she fell and hit her head. But then... We turn around and say, well, hey, there was a gigantic search. Why didn't they turn up her body? It's all correct, everything I'm saying, right? Then the other side of that is, well, you know, we're talking about a little five-year-old girl. And this is so, so sad. Okay, that's disappeared. A little five-year-old girl only weighs 40 pounds. Believe me, searches have missed people in the past. It happens. That's why they'll probably continue to uh, follow up in some other way. And, that, and that's why I'm sure they've asked different people that own acreage and farms and property in the area to uh, double check, double check their, you know, barns and, um, you know, property just in general. Okay, because it's possible, it's possible. A little five-year-old can walk away and, and can possibly walk a, a, a fair distance, okay? But is it probable? Nah, I'm not thinking so because I think they would have found her if she did just walk away and there was an accident or she was attacked by an animal. Then we have to look at the second scenario, was she abducted? Now, this is interesting because there's been some kids abducted in Tennessee. Over the years, there's no question about it. Uh, or let me rephrase that. There have been kids missing in Tennessee over the years. All right. Now, are they runaways? Or, you know, were they abducted or whatever? I don't know. But we can't, we can't write off an abduction. Uh, we just can't do it at this point. Stranger abduction or otherwise, we can't write it off. You know, the red truck that they're looking for is something that's really bugging me because they're really putting that out there. They put that out there in the Amber Alert. They're still talking about it. And law enforcement has not come forward and said publicly that the truck has been found, although there has been speculation and allegations that Donald said 
that the truck was found and the VIN number was connected to one of his neighbors or whatever. So, I mean, but that's hearsay at this point. I, I don't believe it unless I hear law enforcement say it. But still in all, we have to take into consideration, was this an abduction? Now, what else, what else really, really bothers me and grabs me with this truck is that they're coming out and saying, hey, look, we want to talk to the owner of this red truck. And we're not calling him a person of interest. We don't believe he's a suspect. We just want to talk with him for information in case he might have seen something. Now, if they got this red truck from somewhere. I don't know where they got it from. I'd feel better if I did. and have uh, better information for you. But I don't know where they got it from. But they got it from somewhere about this red truck, right? Well, why hasn't the owner come forward and said, hey, guys, yeah, I was in the area. I was doing some work. I don't know the Wells family or I had nothing to do with the Wells family. And I wasn't working at the Wells house. I was at another job or I was just driving through the area. See, that's something that's kind of bothering me. Not only the fact that they're looking for this red truck, but the fact that they have a good reason for looking for this truck. Uh, somebody saw it somewhere, somehow, right? But the owner, even though he's being uh, said and, and uh, law enforcement has told the public that he's not a person of interest or a suspect at this time, he's not coming forward and saying, yeah, I was in the area. What can I do for you? Let me try and help you. I mean, I have nothing to do with this. And yeah, I, I was in the area and I do have a red truck. So we're not seeing either pieces of this, okay, which is, you know, kind of interesting to me. So that's still a possibility that it's out there. Then, of course, I'm talking about an abduction that may not be a stranger abduction as well. Maybe, maybe uh, you know, uh, Summer was abducted by somebody she knew or that knew the family somebody that was familiar with them, someone that could have enticed her to come with them, to walk away from the property and come towards them and give them a chance to snatch her, okay? People say, well, you know, if a stranger came on the property, you know, the dogs would have been alerted and we would have had all kinds of uh, barking going on. But if somebody could entice her to walk away from the property, the dogs may not have been bothered at all. If she decided to walk away from the property on her own and somehow walk down by the road to where a truck came by or somebody came by and saw her and grabbed her then, okay, that can be an abduction, but an abduction where she kind of started to walk away from the property. Now, keep in mind, these are scenarios, these are angles. As I said in the beginning, if we don't play the angles, the angles are playing us. And by us using our minds, using our heads, and looking at all sides of this, we're going to end up eliminating some stuff, and we're going to get closer and closer to where Summer Wells is. All right? Now, if it was someone she knew... I mean, you have to understand that this girl was a very popular girl around people, around church, in church. I mean, and I'm not saying anybody from the church is responsible for anything here. Let me make that clear. I'm just saying that this girl was definitely a people person. She was a beautiful, adorable girl, or I should say she is a beautiful, adorable girl because I have no reason to believe that she's definitely gone, that she's definitely passed on, all right? I mean, odds, of course, are against her being alive, but we do know that a number of people uh, have survived, as I brought up in our last video. Not everybody that is abducted, not even in a stranger abduction, okay, is found dead, okay? Some survive. And I would hope that that's exactly where 
uh, summer is at this point in time that she's surviving somewhere, okay? The other thing that's bothering me is scenario number three, and that's the family accident scenario. And I brought that up in our last video. We just put these, you know, kind of different scenarios out there. Now we're digging more in depth, you know that maybe there could have been some kind of family accident and it, was be and it was covered up because it would have looked completely abusive, may have been taken as abuse of the child, even though it was an accident and it was not abuse. Remember, neglect, neglect can be considered abuse, okay? And neglect covers a big ball field. Uh, neglect covers not keeping an eye on your children. Remember, you're responsible for your children in most states until they're 18. This girl's only five years old. So not keeping an eye on her, you know, uh, shows a lack of responsibility, which could be considered neglect. So that's something we have to take into consideration. We do know that there was a social worker involved with the family. The family was under some kind of supervision. So, you know, uh, if there was an accident and it appeared to be any kind of neglect or any kind of uh, abusive uh, behavior in any way, the whole family could have been dissolved and the kids could have been pulled apart from the mother and father. So that's why I bring out the scenario. I am not saying the family is guilty of anything. But I would be remiss if I did not bring up a family accident that was trying to be hid. You know, the one thing you have to understand, you know, if you have, if you're in a situation like this and there is such a terrible accident and you lose, you know, a family member, you lose a daughter. I mean, if you report it and it's not reported properly or if for some reason you believe that authorities are going to jump on you and they're going to come in and, you know, the family is going to be pulled apart or whatever, or another family member is going to be charged and taken out of the family. You've already lost one member of the family. You don't want to lose another member of the family to prison or wherever or whatever, okay? So you got to understand that, again, I'm not saying anybody's guilty here. Anybody's guilty here, excuse me, but... This is how these things can happen. Accidents can take place, and especially if you're under the scrutiny of the courts uh, and uh, probation, social work, whatever, you know, um, you know, it 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 can really cause a problem if you're found, uh, you know, to be abusive while you're on this probation in this probationary period. You know, the other thing I want to bring out is both parents do have records. There's no question about it. But I do believe that people that have records it can come back from their records. I mean, they can turn their lives around. I truly believe that. We know both parents have done drugs. There's no question about that. Okay? Now, you have to understand when, when uh, Don and uh, his wife are being interviewed... You have to understand that you, you, it looks like they could be high. And maybe they are high. All right? Maybe they are high. I mean, also, you know, how much sleep have they gotten since all this has taken place? The other thing we know for sure is this is probably the worst traumatic incident that could ever take place. So we have to take that into consideration. What's the stress from the trauma? Have they been sleeping? What kind of grief are they going through? What kind of fear do they have? You know, maybe they are on drugs as well. I don't know. We're going to see. Um, I think in time, this is all going to be unraveled, and we're going to find out some real interesting situation, uh, real interesting uh, information. You know, when people do drugs, they deplete neurotransmitter. They deplete brain chemicals. And the more they deplete, really, uh, the crazier and dumber they get. So you have to take this into consideration, too. 
when you're watching these folks be interviewed, that they've done a certain amount of drugs and they have lost a certain amount of brain chemical, all right? Neurotransmitter to be specific, all right? And it takes a long time for that to come back. And if you continue to abuse substance, it may never come back, okay? And you may always be like, duh, you know? And you're not gonna interview well, all right? So let's wait and see. Supposedly he passed his lie detector test. Supposedly she didn't pass it the first time she took it, but she went back and took it a second time. And supposedly based on what she said, she passed it the second time. I don't know about all that. We're gonna have to wait and see. Again, we gotta play the angles, not let the angles play us, okay? The other thing I have that's really bugging me is what does H know? See, this is something that is very important to me. H is the name of the 15-year-old young man that supposedly went swimming with Summer and her mother, and I think the grandmother was along for that as well on uh, that day. Okay, they went to the swimming hall that day or the park that day, wherever they went, but there was swimming involved with H and with Summer, okay? And I'm wondering all about H and what he knows, okay? The thing that bothers me with this is H is a 15-year-old boy, and there's allegations out there that, you know, Summer's mother uh, has talked with him, uh, you know, in, uh, with some sexual overtones uh, on the Internet. You know, there was communication there uh, with uh, some sexual uh, underpinnings, if you will, or overtones, however you want to look at it. And I'm, I just, I'm just having some concerns that there's also allegations that uh, Summer's mom may have been drinking and she may have uh, bought some uh, uh, twisted tea, I think it's called, which is an alcoholic beverage for this young man as well, um, young kid, 15 years old. Um, so I, I don't know. This is... This is kind of concerning to me if these allegations are even close to true. Because don't forget, we've got this whole family being scrutinized by a social worker. Right? So how does H play into this? What's this all about? Did he get alcohol that day? Okay. Uh, you know, that, that's a charge. She can be charged for that. You know, uh, serving alcohol to a, to a minor. I mean, there's no question about it. The other thing I'm concerned about, and, and this, is, this is the time period that really kind of makes me a little crazy. You know, we look at when they get home, supposedly from all this swimming and everything. And then, of course, we have a picture of Summer in the car, and she looks like she's sleeping, and I guess she was sleeping until they got home, is what they're saying. And then, you know, I mean, okay, what child... Uh, that age isn't tired after swimming or whatever and uh, a pretty long drive to a five-year-old and they lay down and they sleep, sleep next to milk containers that are probably cold or maybe they're not cold. Maybe, maybe they got them before they went to the lake or something. Maybe they're warmer. I don't know. But still in all, it, it kind of looks, um, you know, a little, little strange to me, but okay. No big deal, right? So now they get home. Now they get home. They drop off age. They go home. Now, supposedly, they're outside. They're planting flowers. Uh, summer leaves, goes down to the basement. I think the mother said she was only out of her sight a couple minutes. Mother walked in the house. Where's Summer? Kids say, boys say. This is important. She said, I think, that the boys said... Summer went downstairs to play with her toys in the basement or whatever, or that's where everybody believes she was. And then all of a sudden, no Summer, okay? So this is something that really is kind of driving me crazy because it seems like a million to one that in that period of time, you know, she could be grabbed and abducted by somebody. 
you know, it's really hard for me, you know, with the layout of that property and everything else and the dogs, you know, if she didn't walk off the property herself, it wasn't somebody that enticed her and got her to walk over to them somehow or whatever. I mean, it's just hard for me to believe um, completely that, you know, she disappeared within that period of time and, um, you know, hasn't been seen since, okay? So I say to myself, well, could the family possibly be complicit here in trying to stage some kind of cover-up? And then I say to myself, you know, I mean, come on. I mean, we've had some cases over the years we've seen, I mean, where, you know, families or parents for one reason or another wanted to get rid of one of the children, and, and it wasn't an accident. I mean, it was premeditated. I believe if anything happened this summer, you know, in a family situation, it would have been accidental. And I'm not saying, again, the family is responsible here. I want to be clear about that. But these are the scenarios, and these are the things the cops are going to be going over. Okay, you've got, um, you know, uh, the state of Tennessee is going to be investigating this inside out, outside in. They're going to talk with all these people. And believe me, uh, if there's anything out of line here, uh, the investigators from... Uh, you know, uh, Ten Tennessee uh, Bureau of Investigation, TBI, they're going to drag it out. They're going to unravel it. They're going to find it, believe me. Because there's too many working parts here. If this is a family accident kind of situation, there's too many people, you know, involved in all this. I mean, I mean there's no way uh, this isn't going to be unraveled and unpacked. But getting back to it, okay, so now I say to myself, well, I mean, you know, maybe they're not the brightest people in the world, okay? Maybe there was an accident. But certainly they've been around the drug culture. You know, they've worked, you know, uh, the street life, you know, with their usage and everything else. I mean, they understand. They have some street smarts. What kind of scam could possibly be set up in their minds that, oh, she was here, and two minutes ago, she's disappeared and gone on this isolated property, surrounded by the woods, yet there is a dog trail, yet they say that there was some hits on the sniffer dogs down there, okay, that, you know, that was the last place she was on this dog trail. So that can make a lot of sense to me. But it's hard for me to believe that the family could turn around and, you know, pull, I think they're pulling an intelligent kind of scam here if something did happen to summer and they were trying to cover it up because, I mean, where could she have gone in two minutes? How could a predator, not saying it's impossible, you know, like uh, the odds are impossible, right? They hit the lottery, but people hit the lottery all the time. You know, the Powerball, Mega Millions, right? So you got to look at those percentages. So I say to myself, well, you know, how would they go? How would they go about this? I mean, couldn't they come up with a better scam? For instance, you know, if they wanted Summer to disappear, couldn't they say, oh, we were in a mall and. All of a sudden, she didn't come back. We don't know what happened to her. She got out of our sight for a few minutes. I mean, people, you know, children have disappeared from parents in malls on a number of occasions. Uh, John Walsh's son uh, was abducted in a mall, I think, in, a, in one of those stores in a mall. I forget which one. Um, but it, you know, you just turn your back for two minutes, the kid's gone. You know, they can disappear like that. Or a carnival, or um, you know, it's some kind of public get together where there's other people, and oh my God, my child is missing. I mean, uh, we saw a case like this in New Jersey, and uh, the lady had everybody going crazy, you know, at the carnival looking for her child and everything, and oh, she disappeared, and 
you know, the bottom line was she's in jail right now. She's doing, uh, I think, life in prison. And uh, she never did bring the child to the carnival in the first place. So it was premeditated murder. The child was dead, uh, accident or not. And her scam was going to be that somebody grabbed the child uh, at the carnival. Okay. And it worked for a lot of years. I mean, it was only by luck, only by luck uh, and God <laughs> that they, uh, they ended up solving this case many years later. And she's in prison. Uh, she's in prison right now. But the thing that bothers me is how would you think you're going to pull this off on your property, in your house, small area, down the basement, and you're only there, and, and the girl, the five-year-old little girl's out of your sight for a couple of minutes, and then she disappears and never to be seen again, right? So that's not making sense to me. That is not making sense to me. Now, the other thing that's kind of jumping out at me is, how much time did they have? If this was an accident that they were going to cover up, and I'm not saying they are, I'm trying to eliminate them from this. I'm not saying that they are covering anything up, and I want to make that completely clear. But even if they were trying to cover something up, how much time would they have had? Because Don, the father, is coming home. Okay, Don is going to be coming home from work. So now his wife calls him, and she lets him know that they can't find Summer. Okay. So now Don, who looks really authentic, uh, especially recently when I've seen him interviewed and I've seen him talk about the love that he has for Summer and the love he felt he got from Summer, I mean, this guy is going to be upset big time. I mean, he even said this is the only person he believed in his whole life that really and truly loved him. He felt that unconditional love a parent gets from a child. He saw that. He saw that. He was getting that from Summer. So now he's coming home. And I'm sure he has an expectation of seeing his beautiful little bright and bubbly daughter. And she's not there. Now, that is going to make him angry. So we've got a dad coming home who I believe has an expectation, expectation of seeing his child, his beautiful little daughter, who's going to be really angry when he hears what happens. But his wife called him. She told him, and then she called the police after she called him. And... You know, now they're getting together and, you know, they're figuring out what to do at this point in time. But keep in mind, a year before Don got arrested on a domestic, and then I guess they worked it out or whatever, but, you know, he was uh, loaded up pretty good. Uh, he was uh, pretty drunk, and he also had an illegal gun, he had an illegal firearm. Uh, his wife was concerned for her well-being, the family's well-being. She reported him. So now this is this is dad that's coming home now, okay, uh, who went off just about, I don't know, was it about a year ago? And, you know, was uh, threatening uh, his wife. And she says the rest of the kids, but I don't know. I mean, we don't know about that. But anyway, we know this is a guy that can lose it. And we know that this is a guy that can get violent, all right? This is not the kind of guy you want to try and make up a story or give a story to, you know, that the girl he loves and who he believes is the only one that loves him uh, had an accident and she's gone and disappeared and everything else. I mean... Uh, this is a guy who I believe really, really was in love with his daughter, and I don't believe he hurt his daughter. I could be wrong. I've been fooled before. But I think it's just something we have to take into consideration. You know, who's guilty here? 
Who's guilty? Who's not? So, I mean, you know, what we're trying to do is eliminate people. We're not saying anybody's guilty. We're trying to eliminate possible scenarios by, you know, working the angles. That's all we're trying to do. And uh, we like, uh, you know, to have your participation as much as possible. We like to know what you think, okay? Uh, two heads are better than one, and 100 heads are better than two, okay? But the scenarios we're looking at as the first scenario, some are just walking off into the woods and walking away, and something happened to her. Second scenario, she was abducted by somebody. That's something we're looking at. And the third scenario uh, you know, where there was a family accident and there could be a possible cover-up going on by certain people in the family, which is definitely going to be uh, unraveled uh, by the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. There's no question about it. Um, anyway, what I would like to say is that uh, at this time, um, we have working theories. Uh, we have a lot of people uh, interested and involved. You've got major law enforcement agencies involved. They're going to solve this. There's no doubt in my mind they're going to solve this. You will see. Um, but it's, it's very, very sad. Uh, from my lips to God's ears, I pray Summer is still alive. And, um, you know, we can uh, sit back someday and see her come home and uh, watch her grow up. With that all being said, I want to thank you very much uh, for all your participation. We can't thank you enough for your comments. We thank, can't thank you enough for your subscriptions. Um, you guys are just really great. You've supported us. You've really helped us grow. We hope we're bringing you enough information um, you know, we pull things apart. I mean, this is how this goes, okay? This goes no other way. There's no other way to do it. Again, if you're not working the angles, they're working, you've got to look at everything, okay? So we're interested in your feedback. Most of all, you know, again, thanks for tuning in. Please take care of yourself out there. Make it a great day, and God bless. Thank you.